back in that back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Back in that back in that bag again. Whoa. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. Uh, as you can see, it's a long one. I highly recommend checking out the time codes down in the description. Uh, I do a little bit of vlog style content at the beginning. We do an in the bag. There's a bunch of different sections in this video. So check out those time codes. Thanks for checking it out. Let's get into it. What's up, locals? We are just on our way to film the Pound Rufus double convertible Rufus, the all black edition. Pretty excited about this one. You know, um, this is a bag that definitely, if you like know me in this channel, you may have already seen our like Pound Rufus video and you might be thinking like, well, what's the point in getting the double convertible Rufus and is that like a worthy upgrade or is it even worth that change? Um, you know, ultimately it's the same bag. It holds the same number of discs. Um, I will say I did buy this bag with my own money. And I know sometimes people can be critical or go, you know, well, you know, he got sent that bag, so he's going to like that bag, obviously. And, he, you know, he's, he's you know, obligated to speak to it in a certain way. But having done the uh, Lore versus Rufus video, you know, hopefully that puts me in knowledgeable enough to be making the decision to go back to Pound, knowing that, you know, a brand like Squatch is cheaper and, um, but you know what, and obviously I'm, I'm fortunate because things are sent to me and I'm able to, you know, maybe turn some of the items that have been sent to me into the, like, the bag that I actually want. And in this case, it was this Pound Double Convertible Rufus. And again, was it like a significant change? No, not really. Um, I've never been a fan of like bright colorways. Uh, I had that Pound Rufus for over a year and uh, loved that bag, uh, truthfully. And when the opportunity sort of came up for this slight change, I wanted to do the review anyway. And uh, I did buy this one with my own money. So, you know, just so that you know, that's, you know, this is a pretty honest review. Um, today we're heading over to a beautiful course uh, called Lloyd Park Disc Golf Course. Lloyd Park? Lloyd Disc Golf Course? I don't even know what it's called. Everyone just calls it Lloyd. So, um, just southwest of the city uh, in these like rolling hills, it's like a beautiful spot. And I uh, haven't really filmed here, truthfully, and it's ironically, it's one of my closest courses, but as many of you know, I film a lot in the evening after my kids go to bed and whatnot, so uh, this course closes at 8 p.m., so it, you know, it, it leaves you limited opportunity to go and film there, and if I'm going there, chances are I'm going to play just like a regular round, and while I've been filming some mic'd up rounds lately, it's also kind of lovely to just turn the camera off and play around like free of gear. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome actually. So um, anyway, we're heading there now uh, to look at the features, the differences, and uh, probably throw a few holes because I'll be at Lloyd and you know, who wouldn't do that too? So let's get into it. Okay, so we found a kind of a cool little spot. I've never actually even been over here, over at Lloyd Disc Golf Course. Uh, kind of a cool little pavilion space with a good backdrop. So thought we would get in here, talk about it here. We'll go out, throw some holes, film that as well. Um, I mean, I met Lloyd in the summer with my favorite bag, talking about my favorite bag. So life is good, let's get into it. All right, so this is the Pound uh, Double Convertible Rufus, um, designed originally by Cole Radolin. Um, he came to them and basically wanted symmetry in this bag. The original Rufus didn't have symmetry. The one-sided zipper didn't come all the way down. It only opened a little bit of the ways. And now with this, you can kind of fold down both sides. And I feel like this makes this bag, it's silly, but it makes it feel like more minimalistic. And I aspire to be a minimalist in my own life, as you will see with my bag today. Um, obviously there's a ton of gear in here today. I've kind of packed it with everything. I don't always like come out with full gear, but I, I kind of dressed it up for the video today a little bit. Um, so let's talk about what's in this bag, what this bag holds, what the pros and the cons are of this bag, if there are any. 
Starting with the pros, um, I love a smaller setup, I love a lighter setup, and I'm always trying to like sort of simplify my setup so that I'm carrying less. Um, I love my cart that I'm using right now, but the reality is there are certain courses that it doesn't fit. Now, ironically, Lloyd, this course here would be actually a great fit for a cart. Um, but there are some courses that are either shorter courses or more wooded that make bringing a cart challenging. And this is kind of that bag for me that's like a take anywhere. If we're going on a trip, it's still small enough that I can kind of slide it into the back of the car. If we're going on a family vacation, if there's courses close by, it's easy enough to bring and I can kind of slim this bag down and almost give it a feel like a smaller bag in summertime. But then there's also the potential to kind of zip up these sides and give this bag sort of a heartier feel. And I'm totally comfortable with using this bag like in a tournament situation. I don't think that it's too small for that. I think the versatility is kind of incredible. What have I got in here? All kinds of stuff today. Um, you guys know uh, this whole bag almost glows, just about. We've got a ton of discs in here that glow. Reality is I play a lot in the evenings. I've got two young kids and for me, it just makes sense to have one setup. I don't want to have a day bag and a night bag. I don't play enough during the day, especially with making these videos. Uh, it's just not enough of my day and it, I don't find a glow disc hard to find most of the time. So um, my bag mostly glows because I've again tried to kind of slim things down a little bit here. Uh, so I do have a uh, very cool little item here. This is called the Halo from Disc in the Dark. Uh, we did a video on like ultimate sort of glow setups and lights and stuff like that that you can use. This is mine. I've got it in the side here because I often have it in the side here. Um, like a little bit of like a glow oven. I can throw a disc in here, hit the button, which is right over here. I've got like a little remote button right back here. Click this button. It will activate this light for 10 seconds. I don't have to be like doing all of this before the light goes on. Kind of an easy setup. Um, I also, I told you in our pound Octothorpe video after looking at that Rainfly that I was going to purchase a Rainfly and I did. This I bought with my own money as well. This is a Rainfly for this Rufus. And again, it's not always in the bag, but today I've got it in here just to show you that it fits very simply, very easily. I've got my max distance, get my car keys out of the way. My max distance carbon fiber 20 foot um, extendable pull today. These work amazing. I will leave links to all the videos of the items that I'm talking about today down in the description if you're curious about any of them. This is carbon fiber. It's quite light. It extends quite long. Again, I'm guilty of not bringing it all the time. We don't have a lot of water here in Calgary, um, but obviously it is still useful. But sometimes when I'm slimmed down in a very sort of minimalistic way, I don't have all this gear with me. If I've got a tournament or I'm playing something where I know there's a chance I could lose something, then that's where this is going to obviously come into play. I've also fit in my uh, rangefinder, this one here. This is from discstore.com. It is called the Chain Finder. Uh, again, leaving links down below. Again, I don't bring it often with me. I like to bring like a really light, simple setup with me. But if I am playing a tournament or I'm playing a new course, the rangefinder is obviously amazing to have. Coming to the front of the bag, uh, I've got a couple of uh, UV flashlights in here. These little pockets I didn't really use for markers. I've got stamps on my discs to like identify them as my own and I use U-Disc all the time, so I didn't really feel the need for markers. So I have these, it's just a little sort of backup item in case this isn't working or you know someone's forgotten their flashlight. It's just an extra UV flashlight for my glow rounds. It fits right in there, pretty great, and it's not in the way at all. Uh, on the other side, I have like a legitimate little flashlight. This is not a, this is a UV flashlight. This is a regular flashlight for like, you know, seeing lines in the woods and stuff like that. And then this is also a hand warmer. So we're not there yet. It's obviously, it's, it's August right now, but you know, as fall comes around, having a little hand warmer is kind of a great feature for uh, your fall, winter and spring disc golf, at least here in Alberta. A uh, little mini marker, again, did a review of these, uh, the Run Maker. These are great for like checking out your distances. Uh, that is not obviously what we're here for today. We're trying to talk a little bit more about this bag, but these are all the compartments and this is sort of how I am using this bag. Over here, um, you know, just a simple water bottle comes with this insulated little boxy um, container here, which I love. Uh, keeps a, a beverage 
tool if needed, but I just love it too because it gives you like really dedicated storage. Come fall, come winter, come spring, I'll often have like, you know, an, an extra mid in here uh, if I'm playing in colder temperatures, but it gives you like tons of versatility uh, just again to keep something safe in there. Got a little kneel pad here. This is from uh, Top Link Open um, in Ontario earlier this year. So just a little knee pad if you've got to get down on the ground. This fits just kind of in here perfectly. And this was our local edition towel from Three Sisters Course, uh, kind of a beaut. Obviously, I've talked about it before, but these straps are the, the best thing that Pound makes. Uh, they are so comfortable. I love that they kind of stick out like this. It makes it really easy to put on. And this is a bag that I will put on like fully. I won't just put it on like sort of halfway. I won't one strap it because it's just so comfortable and it's so easy to put on. And that comfort really like enhances like my enjoyment uh, on the course. Uh, you've got the little sternum strap here as well. I will often clip this together too because I do feel like it takes a little bit off my shoulders, puts a little bit more on my chest, kind of balances out the weight. And speaking of weight, this bag is uh, probably the lightest bag I have come across. And you know, with more and more people, I'm, you know, if anyone's a fan, I often watch like, you know, some of the podcasts out there, Grip Locked, Tour Life, and uh, Brody's been all talk lately about a cart. Um, and I agree with him, the cart is lovely, but if you can find a bag that's super light and small, I'm not a pro obviously, and he's in a different category of disc golfer to me, um, but you know, having a bag that's super light and portable is also extremely useful, and this pound bag has gotta be the lightest bag I have come across yet. Uh, in terms of storage or what I can hold, you already probably saw this in our previous video, but I will go through it real quick. Um, got a few discs up top here. I've got my uh, Glow, Electron Glow Envy. I've got a Glow Watt, a Glow Glitch. They do serve different purposes for me and I like having all three of those up top. And then into this main compartment, just to give you a sense for storage, I kind of filled it today. Again, probably not carrying maybe quite as many. I might pull like one or two out. I just like it to be sitting a little bit looser. I find it's like really easy to get at stuff, getting stuff in and out of the bag. Uh, so if we go through this, uh, I'll pull out what I can here. Uh, yeah, so I've got a little nine speed party. I've got my um, Jeremy Colling Glow Thunderbird in Proto Glow. Innova's Proto Glow is definitely catching up to MVP. We got a real glow disc here, which is finally nice to see. As someone that threw Innova for like 15 years before getting into glow and before moving to Calgary, uh, I kind of had to jump ship because the glow wasn't good enough and I played a lot at night as I mentioned. So. Uh, Glow Thunderbird, awesome disc. And then we get into the heart of this bag. You know where we're going. I got my Glow Mantra, my Totem, uh, Lion Totem Mantra, I think it's called. Uh, that is like sort of like the beefier edition. I don't think the numbers are correct on this disc. And then we go into my um, Odyssey Mantra. That's my sort of straight to kind of flippy uh, disc for my noodle arm. Some people will think of this as a flippy disc, but uh, as I've mentioned before, we are about a thousand meters above sea level here. So these discs, uh, fly more stable for me than uh, someone that's throwing at sea level or someone that has like a real arm. Uh, now we're new, coming into a newer part of the bag here, seven speeds. I've got my Glow Votum and my Glow Drift. Drift is pretty stable. It looks like it's an understable disc. I find it like reasonably straight flying, reasonably stable. And this is kind of a little beefcake for me, but it's got some glide in it so I can get a little bit more carry out of my overstable disc. So hopefully, um, you know, if you haven't tried one and you're looking for that disc, for me, this has been a really, really good option. The middle part of this bag is quite crowded right now. I admit I'm trying to sort of slim things down. Um, I've got a uh, glow resistor. I have the... What was this called again? Uh, oh yeah, the servo. Sorry, there's so many discs. Uh, and these are newer ones, so I'm not totally used to them yet. And this hasn't been in my bag all the time. It kind of comes in and out. It's it's a stable six. It's, it's almost, it's probably got a little bit more turn and a little bit more fade than say that drift for me. Um, and I do like the feel of it. And then we've got um, right here, the Glow Stig. Uh, nice understable six speed. And on to, again, a crowded part of the bag, the five speed part of this bag. Uh, Reactor, love this disc, I think it's so versatile. That nice little bit of stability, it's great forehand, it's super comfortable for me as a forehand disc. And uh, shout out to um, West Can Disc Golf, if you haven't seen him on Instagram, definitely worth checking out. He's always filming like content on the course. Uh, I just watched him throw his Reactor as an approach disc, a uh, little forehand that he filmed and parked it. Uh, this is a great disc, love the Reactor. 
Uh, this is kind of the newest part of the bag here, and I'm dancing with these two right now. I want to do a video looking at both of these. This is the Color Glow MD1 and then the Horizon Plastic MD1. Uh, such a straight flyer. This disc is probably my favorite mid-range now. It is a little bit dark, it's a bit hard to see, but I did get this glow one, and I'm trying to figure out the combination of these. This is a little bit more stable, but they are great together. Lastly, I got the Mana here, which is my understable five. So again, there's too many discs in like filling the same, you know, there's a lot of overlap in my bag right now, but this kind of gives you a sense of like what's in here and how much I can fit, which is really more the goal of this right now. Uh, I got my glow zone. This is the like UV, um, UV glow. So it, in the sun, it's going to turn blue. It's almost doing it right now. And, uh, but this, again, Discraft is showing up now with their glow like Innova is. So this is a much better glowing disc. Um, this is my overstable approach. It used to have a yarn and we've just switched recently to the zone because it's got a little bit more of a kind of like a putter feel to it. So loving this. Uh, next is the Pilot. It has had stability. It's kind of becoming more of a straight flyer for me and I am kind of enjoying that transition. And then I've got a understable uh, disc in my glow, like throwing slot here. This is the XD. This has definitely got some like flip up in it uh, or like gentle turnover lines been using this one here. And again, this is that proto color, or sorry. This is that proto glow, which Innova is uh, bringing to the table now, which definitely changes the game and it allows me to incorporate more Innova back in my game. Thanks Innova. All right, so lots of discs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 discs in here. I think they say 14 to 16. And again, that's no distance drivers, which are gonna be a slimmer profile. So if you've got a lot of distance drivers, 16 is definitely possible. I've got three up top. I think you could fit four, but I like the like sort of versatility of each of these discs and what they offer me. And you know, if it's a tournament day, I probably have an extra disc in there. And I might even like without all of this here, if the weather's not bad, then the rain fly is obviously gonna come out. If I don't have you know water on the course, then this is definitely gonna come out. And now all I've got is this if I'm playing day. If I'm not even playing day, then all of this stuff here, suddenly this bottom section here, you know, kind of gets emptied for a round of course I'm familiar with and I kind of know my shots already, then maybe I'm not even bringing my rangefinder. And all of a sudden I've got room in this side here for, you know, extra discs here as well. Um, now this, as I mentioned before, being that double convertible Rufus, I can completely zip this up. Great spot for a sweater, light jacket, uh, snacks, food, sandwiches, whatever you're, you know, needing. And I can already feel like how light this bag is getting as I start to remove things. The water bottle comes out, this knee pad comes out, for example, and again, tons of space. Uh, very easy to just pull up this little side flap that I've just kind of tucked in. And again, this thing all of a sudden can start to turn into a much more hardy looking bag. And that's definitely one of the things that I really, really like about it. Uh, I should have a quick look at this as well. I haven't really used this yet. I haven't played in a lot of rainy conditions, but um, I liked the idea of this both for rainy conditions, but I also like the idea of it for if I'm traveling. Um, it's kind of nice to think that I've got like this sort of like protective bag, you know, taking care of, covering. Um, Now I've got this kind of great cover over my bag, and I mentioned this in the uh, Rainfly mentioned during our Pound Octothorpe video, but this part here, very, very like strong, like thicker material here. It's got a rubberized underside, and it is magnetized so that, um, there's my magnet, there it is. So that goes there, and I guess, probably bring this back a little bit. Again, so you just pull it up, Grab your disc if you need it. Pull it back down. Magnet grabs on right away. This just stays here. Again, it's a little bit crunched up right now, but that's how I like to keep it so that it's kind of ready when I need it. Um, but this is great. You've got obviously like access to this middle compartment here. If I hadn't zipped it up, I could have showed you that much better. In fact, let's do that. As I'm here, YKK zippers, you know, kind of like the best Always, um, let's well, let's put things back. Sort of, let's see how it is to load with the rain fly on. That's three nine speeds, two sevens. Uh, 
we've got three sixes. Anyone else go, so I always organize my bag. I'm not sure how you do yours. Leave yours down in the comments, I'd love to know. Um, I always kind of go like highest speed and then most overstable and kind of work my way down. So all the nines, overstable to least stable, all the sevens, overstable to least stable, and I kind of work my way down. I'm not sure what you guys do, but that's, that's what I do. So after those sixes, we've got some fives that are gonna fit. And then the last part here is just a four and two threes. Those all fit in there really nicely. Magnets, you can hear them snapping down. There we go. And get this back in up top. Yeah, so, you know, for travel, I do kind of like love the idea that this is just kind of offering me like some great, great protection. Uh, this can let me get down into the sides here as well. Although the side pockets, I will say like are not quite as accessible. But during a rainy round, chances are you're not kind of going in and out of all those pockets. You just need your discs and you're just trying to get through that round. So um, nice additional, you know, kind of features here with this. And I guess once I, oh, and I didn't mention this on this one yet, but there is one button. There's a mounting point on the back here. And then on the side here, there is a drawstring. It's a little bit probably hard to see given that everything is black, but um, you can see a bit of a theme with this with this setup, so after you've loosened that off, this just comes off, and we're back. So, you know, I I don't think it's any secret. Uh, I love these bags. I am such a fan of like what pound is created here, and uh, this, you know, no different to any of the other bags I've done. Having tested, you know, the Squatch Lore, um, you know, I made the decision myself to go this pound Rufus is like sort of the best fit for me as like a day-to-day -day bag. I think it fits as a tournament bag. You know, I think it can be all of those things, you know, and then even as I'm talking about this, you know, the fact that it's this simple, you know, to kind of pack back up. It's just so portable, so small, so easy. And once these elastics are back on, you know, this is essentially ready to go back in the side here. We can put those back up top. Doesn't really take up much room. Uh, I'll actually put the range finder, or the, uh, the range finder. I'll put the disc retriever in first. Love that they have these like double straps in here. This is such a like great feature to have. All right, so as you know, it's great to talk about, but let's go see how it performs uh, on the actual course. Great D-rings up top, tons of versatility there. Love that I can just kind of clip stuff on. Uh, I'm at the end of a round, I hate kind of going in to my pockets, trying to find my keys. So sometimes I just like to clip them right onto the bag. That way they're like totally visible right there. Uh, the D-rings are great. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was with this bag, you actually get these two um, you know, pleated pockets at the bottom. These are great for like wallet, cell phone, key kind of stuff. I will admit though, like when I'm playing, usually what happens is my phone goes right there. You know, quick and easy for scoring if need be. Truthfully, lately I've actually been using my watch to do my scoring. Udisc has like great functionality in the Apple Watch to like showcase what, you know, just to do scores. I think it'll even track distance from the watch. So, um, you know, very, very versatile, a lot of fun to have. So the phone is here, but oftentimes I'm not even on it, which is one of my favorite things about playing this sport. So uh, we got everything back in the bag. Let's go out, we'll throw a few holes and uh, see how it feels, see how it looks on the course. All right, so wrapping this one up, I mean, I think we all know, you know, I'm a big fan of these bags. I know down in the comments, uh, we're gonna see some, you know, sort of criticism over the price point. Uh, and these bags aren't for everyone. Uh, but, you know, if you're someone that's playing, you know, pretty regularly, um, I've, I've been there, I've had a bag that, you know, was built, uh, you know, for a year or two. Um, these bags are built for a lifetime and, 
uh, that's hopefully what I'm going to have here. Uh, obviously we were, you know, we were sent the other Rufus that I was using at the time. Um, this one interested me and the colorway obviously was a real interest for me as well, which is kind of what led me to this one. And I have to say, you know, I really can't see myself like using another bag at this point, even though there's no real difference in terms of like, you know, when we put it into this like, uh, you know, convertible or double convertible mode where these pockets sit down low, um, you know, for me, if I'm playing, a, you know, playing like a summer round at one of my close, like sort of shorter courses, I don't know, with these down here, I don't have much in the sides. You know, I wouldn't even probably like have my Nakwa power bank up here. I'll get that out of the way for a sec. Um, you know, this bag feels pretty small, pretty minimal. I've got a little bit of space. I got room for a water bottle. I know I just saw that the, uh, you know, that Vagabond is coming out. And that's a, you know, really interesting bag as like a shoulder bag or something that's, I guess, like even smaller than this. But to me, it's hard to even fathom going to that Vagabond when this bag, you know, in its smallest sort of setup where it's in, in this double convertible mode. You know, right now I've actually pulled a few discs out. This is kind of what I just took for a, a week away. We were in BC and playing there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I mean, there's 13 there and there's three up top, 16 discs total. Uh, you know, I could probably sneak. I do have another putter that I don't actually have in here. Like when I did the review, I just showed three discs up here. I could sneak one more up there um, or move one of these discs down. But, you know, this is sort of my like regular summer setup. And, you know, most of the time I'm going and I'm just getting in around for like a couple of hours and I keep it really simple like this. Yeah, I got a water bottle on the side usually, but I got my little towel here and I just try to keep it like as light and as simple as possible, as I'm sure a lot of you know when you're going out. You got a tournament, yeah, you're gonna have that thing pretty, you know, packed a little more full, so you've got all the things you need for that round, but day-to-day -day use, I love having it in this like really sort of basic small mode here. There is still room. I love that this pocket on this side is kind of deep. I can still throw a couple snacks in here. You know, I've got room up the top here for my phone, as I kind of mentioned before. Um, but this bag, to me, I don't know. To me, it's the perfect bag. I, I really don't think there's, you know, a better option out there. And, uh, and after watching this Vagabond series that they just finished, watching him go from prototype one to eight, I believe was the final one, you know, all of the testing that goes on, all of the like subtle minor little details, you know, this isn't a company that just put out, you know, series one, tested it for a while, then, you know, returned with like version two or V3 or V6 or seven. They did all that testing initially before they even brought the first one out. So, you know, could we see little up, you know, updates to that version down the road, you know, like with the Rufus here that they came out with the double convertible. Yeah, sure, I think that that's definitely like a possibility, but the reality is they do so much testing and they could have sold you version one and then made changes and then sold you version two. You know, with our tech items, we're so used to, you know, them giving us like a moderate spec bump for next year, which, you know, makes you either think about replacing that item or upgrading to the next version of that item. They're, they're doing so much of that testing initially so that the version that they're selling is just the version. It's just, you know, and with like lifetime warranty, they obviously have no intention of trying to like upsell you next year with like the newer version. This is a bag you buy for life. So, you know, I understand there's gonna be some people that are gonna be going, I can't even wrap my head around how you could possibly, you know, justify spending that much money on a disc golf bag. And if that's you, that's your situation, and I completely respect and value that opinion. If you've got a little shoulder bag or you've got a cheaper backpack that works for you and you've had it for years and that serves you, you know, for your casual rounds, or maybe you play more regularly and that serves you still, that's great. Um, the feature set here, the weight, the straps, the comfort, all of those things to me make this, you know, more than worth it. And I'm so glad I have this bag. I really would highly recommend it. So thanks again for watching. My name is Ryan. This is Local. We are local.